What's up everybody, it's your boy Alan Wade in this piece once again and today we're going to be embroidering a football design. You saw it on the thumbnail, thank you for clicking on the video. This design is available at alanawade.com for you to purchase for the price of one dollar. You know what I've been thinking guys on a side note, um, I think this thing that we're doing right here, this embroidery video stuff deserves a intro. So. I'm gonna work on an intro for this um, this show, I guess. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. But let's jump straight into the digitizing, I mean the digitized file so we can see and stitch this out together, guys. Make sure you pick yours up on alanaway.com. Make sure you purchase your brother SE600 if you don't have one or PE800 if you don't have one. In the description down below links in the description down below because I am an affiliate link and I do get a percentage when you purchase um, using my link guys so and you don't pay anything extra so let's jump into the file if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet please hit the subscribe button I greatly appreciate it, it helps me out a lot thank you a dub productions so we're over here at the home screen of our se 600 we have our thumb drive already loaded up we're just gonna hit this button right here so it can navigate over to the uh, thumb drive, the files and thumb drive. We hit over on the arrow button, arrow key, hit digitize files so it can go into the proper folder. And as it, you see the hourglass, the brother SE600 is thinking for a little while. So we navigate over to our last file. And here is our football design set and hit end edit. And we're going to go ahead and move this and let me zoom out a little bit so you can see what's happening. I'm gonna push the down arrow and you're gonna see the machine move a little bit because we're gonna position our football all the way to down in the, uh, at the bottom of the uh, SE600 because you see we already stitched it out perfectly and it came out really, really good. So let's put our thread in and let us start stitching out this design. The first thread you're gonna put in, you see the machine is asking for three two, three, which is light brown. This whole design, it says it's gonna take 15 minutes to stitch out, nine minutes for the brown, one minute for the black, four minutes for the white, total 15 minutes, guys. So let's put in our first color, which is the three, two, three, like it said right here, three, two, three. And let's go ahead and load this thread up. I also have some bobbin a new bobbin. Is a new bobbin already in here? Let me see. Let's see what I got up in here. Yep. Got a new bobbin already in there. So we're not going to have to change the bobbin throughout this design. So let's go ahead and put our thread in. If you don't know how to um, hook up your thread, then I have a, dis a, 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 a um, video that shows you how to do it. And guys, these designs that I'm making are intended to be patches. They're intended. I am putting this on a wool. This is a, um, what you call it? Linen. And this is a tearaway stabilizer. Links, product links down in the description below. Guys, some of you guys are going to try to put this on shirts or something like that. It can be done, but the variable is the material the different material is a variable because I'm stitching on linen so when you change fabrics it's gonna come out a little bit differently but what's gonna make the difference guys what's gonna make difference to be honest with you is hold on let me show you is this stuff right here this is fast tack I'm gonna put the product link in down below but this stuff is called fast tack and what it does is you spray it on the back of your shirt and you put your stabilizer on it and it makes it so that the shirt or whatever fabric is doesn't move because what's happening is you guys are hooping and the uh, the shirt even though the stabilizer is on it it's not keeping it that stable because a shirt is a very thin type of material if you will so um as the needles going in and out it's kind of like even though you hoop it good it's kind of like moving the material so it's not like making the file good the problem is not my file the problem is the the machine Sometimes it pulls, sometimes it yanks. So you guys are gonna need some fast tack, especially people, I'm working with a client right now that's dealing with, uh, he, told, he wants this file. The file that I digitized for him is really, he wants it really, really small and I didn't know that initially. But let, let, guys, let me 
start loading this up and we can talk while we're going. So everything is fine. We load the presser foot down and we're gonna start embroidering the, uh, the components of this design. So like I was saying, the client um, told me to digitize this file, digitize it, it came out perfectly this method because it's the method I always use with my um, linen and my stabilizer, tearaway stabilizer. All my designs always come out good. I always, this is the way I, I, I do them. But then when you go to put it on a different material with a different type of stabilizer, those are two different variables. And so I tried to do it the way he did it, actually. Um, I'm not sure what type of stabilizer that he used, but what I found that was happening was the material, which is a t-shirt, I used a standard t-shirt, was sliding around. Um, and of course you're not gonna get the same results that I've gotten with it with it with a t-shirt so the variable is the uh, different fabric that you're stitching on so you're not gonna get the same results so you're gonna think like oh well you gotta adjust the file or something like that but it's it, this is this is a very intricate thing which has me to be honest with you guys it has me ready to say you know what I'm not gonna digitize files anymore because you know, people want to do different things with their files, and I don't want to disappoint people or, and stuff like that when they get my files. But I don't know. I mean, for the most part, I make videos like this, and you see this file stitching out perfectly. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It stitches out perfectly. But when you go to put it on a different material, I can't control that. So that's why I'm suggesting this stuff right here, this Fast Tac 384. I'll put the product link, like I said, down in the description so that the file will stay still. I mean, so that the material will stay still, so that when the needle goes in and out, this material is very like, it doesn't have that much give to it. So um, that's why I like, you know, practicing on it and stuff like that, and stitching out files on it. But depending on, like I said, depending on what you are putting these files on, you're gonna need some fast tack. You're gonna need some fast tack spread on the back of this material, for example. Put it on the stabilizer and it makes it like bonds it to the stabilizer so that way when it's stitching out it won't move and then after it's done you can peel away the two materials you can either put it, you can even put it um on if you're using this as stabilizer and you got your shirt hooked up to that you got your shirt hooked up to uh on top of this i've done that before and in that case you you uh peel away some of this and when you get the design you just cut cut around the design if that makes any sense to you guys but uh yeah that's what i suggest guys i'm um, sorry if that was a long ramp but i just want you guys to know what you're getting into when you're trying to digitize these files when you're trying to stitch out these files uh there's always a a, a variable with this stuff so um all right we're just gonna skip ahead a little bit just continue to uh, let your file stitch out. If you purchase this file from alanaway.com, it is available right now. If you haven't purchased it, go purchase yours. And if you purchase it, just go ahead and let your file stitch out and I'll get right back to you. What's gonna happen is it's gonna stitch the rest of this out then it's gonna jump over to this side, stitch this side of the football out, and then I'll get back to you when it's um, pretty much done this part, I'll get back to you. All right, guys, just wanted to check in real fast. You can already see the design really, really, really starting to take form. You can see the uh, laces in, in, inside of the uh, football design. And now the SE600 is starting to stitch out the other portion of it. You can really see it starting to work now. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit more to the up, to wait till it gets to the other side. The machine's just going to do everything itself. And we'll be right back. Now it's stitching out the other part of the football. You can see the one up above that was stitched out before, see how good it looks. So that's actually the file that you're gonna get once, you, once this is completely stitched out. And you can see the second one that we're stitching out together coming along just as good, just as flawless. And like I said, this is what happens when I stitch out on this. You go stitch out on something else, use a different type of stabilizer, don't use any fast tack. And I don't use any fast tack on this, but when you're dealing with a t-shirt, a t-shirt is a lot, a lot more slippery and a lot thinner than this linen material. That's why I like to stitch on this linen material right here. 
So now it says done and it's going to go to the next file guys. So let me show you guys what to do. So on the screen of SC600 it's asking for the black thread which we're gonna put in in a moment but just come back over here to our design and I want you guys to go ahead and swipe one time to release. And you don't have to do this but I'm gonna tell you guys to do it anyway. Just go ahead and trim away these little pieces right here. Let me reach over and grab my tweezers so that I can tweeze this properly. Somebody told me to get some needle nose. I have some needle noses, but I don't think it's really necessary. Got that. And then there's one little part down here. Boom. Tweeze that. Grab it. Trim. Got that. All right, so everything is out. Trimmed away the little small part parts. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab this out, wind it up to save it so it doesn't get tangled all over the place like I always do. Go ahead and grab my spool saver, links down in the description below for the spool saver. All right, and go ahead and put that in. Now I'm gonna grab my black thread that the machine is asking for. Got my spool saver on that, take that off, and go ahead and load it into our SE600 like so and yesterday was veterans day guys i hope all my veterans out there had a great veterans day i'm a veteran i went ahead and went to mission barbecue had a great time had some good food they give veterans free food um on veterans day and on memorial day so shouts out to mission barbecue really really appreciated it really appreciate it they always giving away free food for like veterans and stuff like that and so, and their food is really, really good. The price is reasonable um, when you get extra stuff. So, shouts out to Mission Barbecue and King of Prussia. All right, so now we got our black thread in. And let's see what it does right here. Let's see what it does. All right. Looks like it's stitching a little outline for us here, little design, little pattern if you will, it's going to go to the other side and stitch out the next one and we have a black jump thread stitch, jump cut from here to here and we're going to trim that down um, before we insert the next color which is the white. And the way I organize the file is the white's gonna go here first, then it's gonna go in the middle, then it's gonna stitch out this part. All right. Got a little bit of jumping, popping off. A little bit of jumping of the machine popping off. That's okay, it's not gonna kill anything. And guys, actually, <laughs> earlier today, I uh, had a machine, I had a uh, thread, um, what's the name on me? It, um, a needle. A needle, not, it didn't bro break on me, it bent on me. So that was very interesting to uh, to have happen to me while I was uh, working on the client's design. I, I, I swear I stitched that thing out like five times already. Well, actually way more than five times to be honest with you guys. I stitched this thing out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe nine times already I've stitched this guy's design out. And um, I would have been done already, but he didn't tell me that he wanted it to be so small. And typically when I um, make my designs, I make them one size, make them all one size so that, uh, and that's the size that's, that you're going to have the most easiest, uh, easiest uh, time dealing with as far as when you go to stitch it out. But people want like little logos and little emblems and stuff like that. But just keep in mind, when you're making those little tiny designs, you want to kind of keep them... Um, not let them have that much detail like the Tommy Hill logo for example not that much detail involved with that you know the polo the Ralph Lauren if you notice the Ralph Lauren um, uh, logo back in the day they only had one color but the one color was just like the, all the all the like the um, sorry I'm trying to get this on the side all the details were uh, in one color now, if you notice, when they started doing the different color ones, the, the, the same logo 
with the different color ones, the logo is much, much larger on the shirt, if you recall. They didn't do that by chance, guys. They didn't do that by chance. They did it because when you're doing something like that, it's very hard to stitch out. And you know, it also looks stylistic when you do it like that. So that's the second reason why they did it. But um, you know, just keep that stuff in mind. When you're making your logo to be stitched on directly onto a garment, make sure you don't, you know, or do a variation, do a variation of your logo, of your company logo. Um, one that's dummy down in order for it to be like better stitchable when it comes to like a small little logo. If you're trying to simulate something like a polo or something like that, make sure you make a simplistic version of the logo and not, not have it be the same one with the intricate little small parts. That's something to think about when you're doing your stuff, guys. All right, just a heads up. So anyway, see what it's doing, it's stitching out the white part of the foot of the ball. And I'm gonna let this stitch out, we're gonna watch it. And then it's going to jump to the middle. Doing a bunch of jump in there, but it's okay. Don't panic. Still gonna be flawless. Cause that's what we do. Boom, right to the middle. And this part right here, I'm very impressed with. I'm gonna stop right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this. And you guys do the same. You guys that are following along, you do the same. Stop right there, cut it. All right, and continue on. All right. Once again, this design, alanaway.com. alanaway.com. Um, so when you're stitching this on to t-shirts, make sure you're using your fast tack. When you're stitching this onto hoodies, make sure you're using your fast tack. When you're stitching this onto jeans, anything, make sure you're using your fast tack so that the material stays neutralized in one position. All right, so that could be something that's happening to you guys um, that's making this a difficult experience if you're not getting the same results that I am. But you see what the design is. The file is perfect, you know. So if you're not getting the same results as I am, it could be one of those variables, okay? So let me go, go ahead and let this thing stitch out and we're going to, um, I'm gonna get right back to you. It's doing a whole lot of snagging. I saw this happen, but that happens. Perfectly normal for the machine to do. All right, everybody. We are just about finished up. We are approaching the end. Counting down, this stitch was a fun and easy stitch. And I like, I love, I absolutely love the design, people. Let's go ahead and take a look at this thing and see what we got here. Sweep this one time, bring it up one time for your mind. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at what we got. We're gonna, let's try to bring it down here and get some lighting. Let's try to focus a little bit. And let's try to stitch, trim that, trim that, blow it away. And let's compare the first one to the second one. Looks equal, is good, so that you know that it's not just me that are getting these results. I did it once, and I did it twice. Same results, alanaway.com. Pick yours up now for the price of $1. For this file, you too can have a football on your, I don't know, whatever you wanna put it on. So guys, this design is as quick and easy as they come. This is the football icon. If you want this design, go ahead to alanaway.com and purchase yours today and stitch along with this video. Very, very simple, smooth, and easy stitch. Only change the thread one, two, three times, and you see all the details. It looks great, guys. And once again, don't forget to grab your fast tack spray adhesive spray so that you guys can um, have a smoother and better embroidery process and you guys can get the same results or similar results that I'm getting. Um, or you can make these things into patches, use your um, freight check 
to go along the edges, wait till it dries, and then clip real close to it and make these things patches, guys. Okay, so that's another thing that you can do. So thank you for watching. It's your boy Alan Wade. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at ADUB Productions. Follow me on Facebook at ADUB Productions. Like that page, follow that page, and King ADUB on Facebook, like that page and follow that page. And as always, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby? Like this, like this, like this.